What's up guys, it's Crash, and I wanna talk about Battlebit Remastered. The numbers have been climbing ever since launch, and basically why I think it's doing so well, and honestly, I really hope DICE is paying attention. I hope the waves that Battlebit Remastered is making right now within the PC community shines a big enough light on the mechanics that a lot of us love as Battlefield players, some of the things that made Battlefield great. And just, I hope, I hope that the waves it's making are large enough that DICE is paying attention because they're probably developing the next Battlefield. They're getting things going on that. And I hope this is making them pay attention. As you guys can see, player numbers have peaked over 80,000 as of late and the number keeps going up. And I thought it would be a important to talk about why that is and kind of spell that out and hopefully dice gets this message when they develop the next battlefield i would love for this to be kind of a beacon to show hey some of these mechanics that the, the community has been wanting for a really long time and talking about yeah they're still viable and yeah people enjoy them i don't know if you guys have played battle bit remastered but i've had quite a bit of fun on it i'm sorry to the console folks that haven't been able to get a chance to play it but i've really enjoyed it and it, i don't i know the games are fundamentally different like the healing mechanics are just a little bit more hardcore and battle bit remastered and stuff like that but i've really felt it scratch some of those old battlefield vibes just like those itches it scratched those old battlefield itches just a little bit and i get those vibes uh when playing the game with with the VoIP, the massive battles and how everything works, it just feels really good and it's a lot of fun to play. And that can be seen in the player numbers and the trend going up. And what I wanna talk about is, let's just start from the beginning with Battlebit Remastered. The launch and first impressions. Now, this game was under development for quite a long time and had several play tests, but what that meant was, when they kicked the servers on, it worked from the word go. When they kicked the servers on, I was actually listening to a Discord stage call with the developers and as it launched, uh, the the one of the developers was refreshing the player numbers. He said, "Oh, four thousand. And he refreshed again. Oh, like eight thousand. And player numbers were just climbing, climbing, climbing. But I jumped into a match right then, and it worked fine. It worked flawlessly. The hit reg was great. There was no stuttering. Everything was fine. And Dice has always had a habit. It's even been talked about by the Andrew Wilson, the CEO, how they've had to fix games after launch. They've started in a really rough state. But this just shows you." First impressions are really important. And from the moment Battlebit launched, it worked. It worked great. And along those lines with the features that it had in it, it had a server browser, which is still incredibly, oh, it's it's just incredibly needed in Battlefield 2042 right now. Because if you go into Battlebit, it's so refreshing. They have all the modes, right? They have, you can still play front lines, you can play a rush, you can defuse those MCOMs, you can, you can play conquest, you can play domination. There's just a bunch of different modes that are all in there and you can select the ones you want. Same goes for maps. You can use the filter in the server browser, find the lowest ping, find the amount of players you wanna play with, filter down to the very map that you wanna play because when you played Hourglass four times in a row on 2042, you start to really feel why you want a server browser to be able to find and play the games you want. It was one of the greatest things uh, that Battlefield had and it also 100% uh, completely blew out of the water the thought that there could be skill-based matchmaking because when you find your own server, that can't be in there. So I know there's rumors of that going around with the crossplay and all that stuff. And along those lines, the features that it had right at launch, it had a scoreboard. They didn't need to add that later. They're not really adding anything. They're starting from the starting line. I can't stress this enough how DICE and Battlefield always start behind the starting line. They have to spend months, even a year to get the game up to where it should have launched and then they can start adding content. Well, Battlebit is starting at the beginning and they're already adding content, which we will get into just a minute. But the features were at launch, you have a scoreboard, you have a server browser, you have classes. Those classes are back and everyone plays the way they should be. I know they tried to add them with the specialist into, um, into Battlefield 2042, but this is the true, um, just pure class system um, in Battlebit Remastered. Everyone plays their role. There are some actually really nice cosmetics too that kind of fit in with everything um, that you can change on your player. I know that, I know with the graphics and everything, we'll, we'll get to that here at the end. Um, but there is squad management as well. So you can switch teams, you can get in your server browser, you can manage your squad, you can lock it. You can kick people out of the squad so you can play with your friends. Um, squads are way more than four. I think you can have up to, to eight people in a squad so you can have fun with your friends. It's a very social game. 
and with the VoIP that is in BattleBit Remastered, it is a ton of fun. It's really funny uh, with the VoIP and the communication. That was at launch. So if you remember in 2042, they didn't even have uh, VoIP at launch. And then you have cosmetics and skins like I talked about that kind of fit the theme. Um, the player controller is also incredibly crisp. There's leaning. That's not even in 2042. Um, how how you can move your player across, you can, you can kind of jump strafe and stuff like that. It all feels really really good in the game right from launch that doesn't have to be changed um like i said the modes are all there the progression works really well too and there are a lot of weapons one developer said that there are, i think he said there are like 55 or 58 guns that are already done and ready to go in the game that they've already worked on so there's going to be a ton of weapons and the progression within those firearms is uh pretty cool there's a lot of skins a lot more attachments that you can unlock than in a game like Battlefield 2042. I also really like the overall progression of BattleBit. It feels really well too, because um, even if you want to unlock some of the other guns and some of the better snipers, the guns are locked to overall player uh, player level. So you can play as an assault, you can play as a medic and still be unlocking some of those like better sniper rifles, for instance. So I really like that. That was well thought out. And with content and maps, there were 18 maps at launch, I believe. They even released a new map right before launch, and they also just released another map uh, just the other day. So they're up to 20 maps, all of which have a day and night variation. Again, you can go through the server browser, find the ones you wanna play, try those. They also have uh, map voting in between rounds, so everybody can play the map that they want to, uh, which is really cool. But you start to see how the importance of playable content. I really think season five with Battlefield 2042 showed the weakness of having one map per season, right? Like we spent several hours and a few days on the map in 2042 and it felt really good, but it's incredibly stale to have this many maps, this many more maps in the pipeline is really, really cool. And you can start to feel how having a lot more content to explore adds to the staying power of a game and it feels like such such a value uh, to be able to have this and you know that more maps are coming and it's probably going to be more than four maps an entire year because like at launch they've already released two extra maps so that is at a much faster pace than battlefield and you start to see the importance of actual playable content with the staleness that we already feel in battlefield 2042 season five now with all this being said i know that the graphics are not for everyone and i've heard a few people say that they can't get into it because of the graphics but even with that being said can you imagine the battlefield graphics with all of these features and working right at launch that's what i'm trying to say that's the point that i'm trying to get across is that you have a game that looks like roblox but over eighty thousand people from squad battlefield all those shooter games are playing it because of the features that are there. So it shows the importance of launch and first impressions. It shows the importance of a server browser. It shows the importance of a class, having all the features at launch, having the maps and modes that you can go ahead and find, having a lot of content, having good movement, uh, hit reg and gunplay, and having the transparency from the dev team to talk about already from launch, what they're working on, what their plans are, and what they want moving forward. You have all that being successful in a graphics package that looks like Minecraft or Roblox that just shows how important having those things in line are. There are a ton of people playing BattleBit. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend uh, giving it a try if you have not. It's $15. Even if a lot of people say the game's gonna die, I don't think with this amount of content and this many people playing it, it's gonna die anytime soon. You definitely have time to get your $15 out of it. It goes to show that a live service with no microtransactions doesn't have to mean no content. So with all that being said, you have all these people playing this game on Roblox graphics. It just goes to show how important that stuff is. And DICE, I hope you're listening. Speaking of listening, thank you guys for listening and watching this video. I can't thank you enough for making it to the end of it. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see you later on.